are starting with a uniformly charged ring that looks like this. So it is uniformly charged. Uh, and it looks kind of like this. Here is the ring. And we are going to start out by figuring out uh, the ring has a radius of lowercase a. And at a distant at distance x along the axis, the cylindrical axis of this ring, uh, we are going to figure out first the electric potential difference between a point initially power far away and a point x distance from the ring at that point. Figure out the electric potential difference between a point infinitely far away and a point x distance along the flux cylindrical axis. And the electric potential difference equals the negative times the integral from A to B of the electric field that we have. This is correct, but unfortunately we don't know much about the electric field at this point to be able to get to that. Right? So I, while I agree with that, we don't know much about the electric field to figure out the electric potential difference. So that actually is not the route we're going to go this time. <coughs> Other thoughts? Tim. Remember, the electric potential difference between a point infinitely far away and a point r distance from a point charge is just kq over r. What we're going to do now, because we have something that's a uniform charge distribution, we're going to split it up into little pieces rather than q. We're going to have an infinitely large number of infinitesimally small pieces dq. OK? <clears throat> so now, the electric potential difference. Work through this integral, please. Uh, Travis. Um, is there a charge distribution? That's the integral. You could say that this has, we could call it a linear charge distribution, sure. <coughs> that's, that's OK. R is constant. And that's equal to square root of the well, square root. Let's just start with the r is constant. We'll get to the what is equal to in just a minute. Okay. Notice r is constant. So this is equal to k over r times integral dq. R is that distance right there. No matter which dq we pick, all the way around, r is constant. So we can simply take the integral of dq, which is going to be equal to k times big Q over R, big Q being the charge on the ring. And as Nish was pointing out, R is simply uh, using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We can get R is equal to the square root of a squared plus x squared. That is the electric potential difference between a point infinitely far away and a point x distance along the cylindrical axis of this ring. Okay? From there, we're going to figure out the electric field. You should be able to, at this point, be able to point in the direction of the electric field at point P. Please point now. How do you know that the electric field is to the right? Yes. Um, uh, the ring has positive Q. Ring has positive charge. The electric field is defined by a positive charge, so it's going to be to the right in general. How do we know it's directly to the right? So we know it's directly oh, to the, the right. All the y components from dq, for example, the electric field from dq is going to be in this direction. If we put dq down here 180 degrees, the, the electric field is going to be in that direction, and all of the y's are going to cancel out. So the electric field is simply in the x direction. We know uh, it's in the positive y direction. So how are we going to figure out the electric field now that we know the electric potential difference between a point infinitely far away and a point x distance along this axis? Um, <coughs> Andrew. Um, the electric field is equal to negative times the derivative of electric times the derivative. The inverse of the equation you gave me before. Right? So it's just we're taking the derivative 
of the electric potential difference here. So we have the negative of the derivative uh, with respect to x of k times q over the square root of a squared plus x squared. <laughs> please work through this derivative, please. Stay A squared plus x squared to the negative one half power. <laughs> Is missing something, uh, John? Two x. Remember uh, chain rule? Yeah. Uh, x squared, you got to multiply by. 2x as well. Yes, the negatives cancel. Uh, we're going to lose a negative, we're going to lose a 2, and we end up with the electric field is in the x direction is equal to um, k times q divided by a squared plus x squared to the 3 halves power. All of this multiplied by x, and it's in the i direction. 